Kinky Key Podcast is presented by Pewter Pros, Stitch Prints, and Digital World Design Family of Businesses, celebrating 25 years of small business ownership in Kankakee County. Learn more at mypewterpros.com, stitchprints.com, and digitalworlddesign.com. So how is this going to work? I think I'm going to close my eyes and... You're going to open up the Dairy Queen Blizzard from Noble Dairy Queen, and I'm going to guess what flavor it is. Oh, okay. I'm going to guess what, what the Blizzard of the Month is for January. Okay. So my eyes are closed. You can't, I can't see anything. I promise. I'm not, I'm no. not cheating. I can I, smell I, something can, very... Can, what, do you, what do you smell? Peanut butter. Pe don't. You can't say that. I'm Sorry. supposed to guess... I was supposed to guess what this is. I just got excited. Okay. I love uh, okay. I, I understand. I'm excited too. Okay. I'm going to try to get like some candy in there. Mm. So then you could really. So there's candy in there. There's what candy. You're oh. Hmm. Peanut butter. Candy. Looks like. Well, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, okay. It, can I Can I turn my head? Yes. Right. Okay. Mmm. Yep. Oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, pretzels? Pretzels? I didn't know there were pretzels in there. Um, Can I take a bite? Tastes like peanut butter and then some peanuts. Oh, peanuts. Is that... That's a Reese's Take 5. What? Yeah. It is. Oh, that's delicious. Mmm. All your favorite things. Our favorite things. I'm obsessed with chocolate and... Pretzels. Mm -hmm. So a Reese's Take Five ha essentially has those things, plus mm -hmm. peanuts and peanut butter. My so. favorite thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Peanut butter is really good. Two thumbs up. What do you think? Now we got four thumbs up. Four thumbs up. Four thumbs up. I think the only thing, if if I have to say, is that I would just want more chocolate. I was going to say that. What if it was chocolate ice cream? With the Take 5 in there. Well, it would be chocolate soft serve, not right. chocolate well, ice cream. Because yes. Dairy Queen essentially is not ice cream. It's, right. It's its own thing. Right. Or what if it had a little bit of sea salt in it? Mmm. That could be good. Well, there's salt with the pretzel, though. Yes. And probably the peanut. But um, maybe, at least with the pretzel, though. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, so, Take 5 Blizzard. It's uh, the Blizzard of the Month at your Noble Dairy Queen stores. So, go get one before January's over with. Because it is almost over with. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. There's no way that's lasting long. It's so good. Thanks, Dairy Queen. Thank you. Thankful for the way these stories hold on to the lifetime we Welcome to Kankakee Podcast, where we talk about the people and places of Kankakee County. I'm Jake Lamore, and I have no idea how to introduce this episode because I have never done anything like this in my entire life. Not sure if any other podcaster has. I didn't do my research. I'm guessing somebody has done this, but this episode is very unique to Kankakee Podcast and just a podcasting all around. So a couple weeks ago, I announced that Brie Haug from Electric Lady Lounge was going to tattoo me while I was interviewing her for an episode of Kankakee Podcast. And the cool part about that was is that you got to participate in this by voting for your favorite 
Kankakee-themed tattoo to be inked on me during this recording session. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting jabbed with this needle, and I'm trying to conduct an interview with Bree, which actually turned out not to be so bad. I think it made the tattoo session go by much quicker because I had something to focus on. I had to focus on trying to interview Brie and keep a conversation going with her and just learning about her and her craft and her history and all that stuff. So I actually think it made the tattoo better. But regardless, so the there were three different designs that you could choose from on our website. And then the tattoo that had the most votes was the one that was going to be inked on me during the session. And so you're about to find out which one won, of course. I'm not going to give it away quite yet. You'll find out in the episode here. But um, it just ended up being such a blast. I had such a good time. I didn't cry like a little girl like I thought I was going to. And it it just went so much better than I could possibly imagine. So let's get to it. I'm debating between... What do you think? Should I do it here or should I do it here? Now, I do give this sort of um, suggestion. Okay. Whatever you get right here should be something pretty significant. I feel like it's one that people see all the time. Yeah, so, I mean, people see this one all the time. Yeah, so just, and you're also going to see it, just so yeah. you know. Um, also up here, though, too, so how about you face the mirror. I'm going to show you. Okay, show me how this works. Okay. Curious to see uh, the method to your madness. So... If we did here, what I'm going to do mm -hmm. is I'm going to avoid going into what we call the ditch. Now, <laughs> I know, and it's, it's painful. Um, uh, this yeah. size, though, actually looks really good if we go on this part of the body. And mm -hmm. I'm almost a little, I think I kind of favor this just because the shape of Illinois with how the arm is here where mm -hmm. it kind of gets wide and then gets slender. Mm -hmm. that, that fits it very nice. Now, okay. we'll also take a look. Were you thinking kind of... You're good. It's so now, <laughs> if we go on the upper arm, mm -hmm. my suggestion would probably be somewhere lower yeah. up here. Usually, you want something a little bit more rounded composition-wise, and you know, just to kind of like, like I was using an example of like a lady head or just like you know a head of some sort. But if you want to go like, we could either go to the side, go forward. I was thinking more. Yeah, yeah. kind of like where, almost where this is placed, it could probably lower than this, because this is that yeah. part where you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. So probably, yeah, probably. Well, take a look at both, kind of see what you like. They're both in really nice visible spots. Mm -hmm. Um I would say pain-wise, they're about the same, if that matters. Yeah, um, that's so kind of what I remember. This, the the inside of the arm here was pretty painful. Granted, I mean, you got a lot of black in that. I mean, it's like, really, yeah. so... Yeah, and I had that done, like, three times in order for it to... I don't know who you went to, but yeah, that's probably why. Okay, so, um, yeah, it's up to you. Okay. What do you think, Lizzie Bear? Um, I kind of like the lower part of your arm. Really? Personally. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Okay. Well, she always makes me look good, so I'm gonna go with okay. whatever. I vote for the lower part too. I don't know. It just looks like it fits right there. You know? Yeah, I I get it. So it now what sense. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a stencil. I'm gonna have you stand again when I put it on, but you can just hang sure. out for a second if you want. Okay. We live in such a great community where I don't even think we realize how much we have and that are in the arts or just like even in here like I get sentimental like I mean look at us we're all just like young creative like entrepreneur art like it's just so cool like, yeah that's true to collab you know <laughs> it's just like it's neat it is yeah I agree and uh, especially coming from sometimes like the old school like um you know everyone's in competition with one another, especially when it comes to media, yeah, like, obviously. I don't feel that way so. when I'm, you know, at an assignment now and it's younger people. I'm like, okay, oh, mm -hmm. hey, ask me a question about their camera or something like at the high school sidelines. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Together, right. right. It's so true. Yeah. Just yeah. community is so important. That's why it's yes. like, you know, I'm just a big sap. Like, even going to NAC the other night, it's like just seeing a bunch of people together. It's just really cool. And then, yeah. Yeah. It's very special. It is. And that's why Electric Lady Lounge is so awesome and so Thank popular. You. you know, it's, I would say, I always say we're more of an experience just because 
I would about like 95% of our clientele are return clientele and it's because I really just think that there is such a need to have a place where you feel welcome, safe, yourself and also being able to take ownership of your body, you know, do things that make you feel more confident. Like that's so important. I mean, I would just come in here to look at your mural, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Just look, at, yeah, just like, look at the mural all day. It's just so, I, I'm attracted to all the different colors. He did such a good job. You know, that's Who did that? Mac Blackout. So he um, is like ranked as one of Chicago's top muralists. But I mean, he's done oh. projects that are, like he's done, yeah, he's doing something in LA. He, he's done like Lincoln Hall, Bric-a-Brac, Reckless Records, the Starbucks okay. Reserve. Like he is a big, and not only that, but he's also a musician and like a, He'll see like a couch in an alley and like all of a sudden like do a realistic face. The one across the street is also by him. The, um. Yeah. The which one? The one, this is right across from Safari. So. The, the red one with all the yeah. Oh, oh, on the uh, the old KAN yes. building. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I didn't even know that, but I just I looked up like Chicago muralist on Instagram, and I was mm -hmm. just looking at the pictures to see what would capture my eye, and I saw it, and I was I had no idea it was the same artist. So he's fantastic. I didn't know that either. Yeah. So, so it's like you know I'm always drawn since I was little. That's been just like like constantly like filled notebooks um, after. Uh, high school I took art classes and then after high school I went to the American Academy of Art for illustration um, I'm gonna stand with your feet together real quick yeah I went for illustration and um, I didn't finish but <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was a good experience and originally I wanted to be like a comic book artist um, or just like illustrate for children's books but yeah then I don't know, I kind of already had a little bit of a following for my art locally because I would do commission work and sell drawings and prints. And then after I had my son, I was just like, you know, I was on maternity leave and I was like, huh, I feel like I have just like an open like slate right now. Take a look at that time if you like that. Um, but I felt... I think it looks good. What do you think, Lizzie? This looks great. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. nice and straight. Mm -hmm. We're going to let that dry for a few minutes. Sure. But yeah, so after I had Harrison, I was just, um, I went and got a tattoo from Matt Forkenbrock for like a flash event. And I kind of just brought it up to him like, you know, hey, if you're ever looking for an apprentice, like let me know. And then it was perfect timing because that month was October. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Inktober, but that's when artists join globally, like online, and they get like a calendar of things to draw daily. So when I had asked him that, I was drawing every day, like something that was themed. And so I, is Inktober in October? Yes. Or is, okay. Yeah. And just, so, he, yeah, it's, it's cute. It was like Halloween <laughs> the, yeah, and, That's cool. So he was, he was seeing my artwork and eventually, yeah, he did offer me an, an apprenticeship. Um, so, and another thing too is I have a cousin that lives in Texas that I always looked up to. He owns his own tattoo shop. So I kind of always like. It's always been in the back of my mind, but never really attainable because it feels like I want to be a rock star, <laughs> you know? Like that's yeah. And we're definitely not rock stars. No, because uh, it's an art. It's yeah. an art. It's just not yeah. music. It's it's but it's you still yeah. feel cool. Like you know, you I walk know. into a room and you're like, oh, well, not well, really. It's all you different. are a rock star. <laughs> I feel like you're a rock star in the Kankakee area when it comes to tattoos. Like literally. You cannot have a conversation with someone about tattoos in the Kankakee area without their name coming out, without your name coming out of their mouth. That's, <laughs> it's it's, it's nearly impossible. And and Matt's too. Oh, yeah. Matt Forkenbrock. Those are oh. like the two names that I usually oh, hear. Yeah, Matt, he, he, him and I, we he taught me for, let's say I think I was with him for either three or four years at 22. And, you know... He's, he even just kind of became like one of my closest friends just because he taught me, he taught me during a time that, because during my apprenticeship, I ended up, you know, getting a cancer diagnosis. So that was around that time. Yeah, that was around that time. So it was like about a year in and that's, I really feel like that's kind of what just moved, made me move like just and all, all the, I, I put everything into tattooing at that point. That's what healed me. Um, I was really grateful to have, to have, you know, Matt as my mentor. Um, 
so yeah, and you know, we're still friends now. Like he was messaging me earlier, joking like, "Oh, we're gonna put it put it on the shop, and I'll listen to it." And you know, and maybe they will. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it's good, you know. Yeah. It's weird. It's just all happened so quickly. It feels yeah. Like. But um, yeah, because when did you start uh, your apprenticeship with with Matt? I want to say it was 2018. I'm horrible so at that, dates. So in the grand scheme of things, it almost seems like it was yesterday. <laughs> you know, and it really has gone kind of quick because I they say, and by they, I'm just thinking that, mm -hmm. you know, they say it takes about like five years to really get settled. And I'm in year four, but I tattoo a lot. I don't, I feel like I, I'm tattooing, I tattoo like uh, four to five days a week. And how many do you do in a day? Depending on size, um, anywhere from two to six. So I mean, wow. I yeah, it's That's a lot. I I very much keep it as much of a nine to five as I can, pretty and um, yeah, because and that's what's going to be exciting too about expanding is that I am looking for more artists. I'm teaching somebody right now, my apprentice Kitty, and it'll be nice to kind of like I can become a little bit more selective and not feel like I have to do everything by myself because that, you know, it can be exhausting a little bit. I would imagine so. Does not to mention, you know, I'm really trying to make our social media special. I, I mean, I do it all. I do every, like, well, at least for me, Ari Air, and Tinted, that's, and she's also helped me with a lot of stuff. But like, Yay, Ari. yeah, yeah, no, I, I will never take any credit for Tinted. That's all her, but we make a really good team because I might have like these great ideas, but she is like meticulous and bougie and knows how to elevate it. <laughs> so it's a good duo. Well, and you're related, right? Uh, yeah. 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 So I'm the <laughs> oldest sister, even though she likes to act like it sometimes. Um, <laughs> but people, people usually like our banter, you know. I would say we're, we're a little like Keenan and Kel, Mary Kate and Ashley. <laughs> it's a good time. It's like. I still like can't believe this is like what I get to do. We really have a good time. People just like get to be who they are in here. And yeah. We're just a couple of dorks, you know. It's like I like to say my clientele is mainly the misfits. I don't know what that means exactly. Does that mean that must mean I'm a mi a little bit. I'm officially a misfit. You like oh yeah. So the misfits, which also include the nerds. I mean, you said you're a huge Star Wars fan, so so am I. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. So. Guilty, you know? guilty as charged. I mean, it's good though. It's good to have a place where you can just feel authentically yourself. And if you can't be a little silly and stupid, then what's the point, you know? Gotta have fun with it. I literally am silly and stupid every single day. People <laughs> just don't know it. Yep. So, what? explain exactly what you're doing right now with your, so they call them tattoo guns, what do they call them? So if you called it a tattoo gun to a tattoo artist, they're probably gonna like look at y'all snotty and be like, it doesn't shoot. Which, <laughs> so the correct terminology is machine. So okay. right now I'm setting up the needles. I don't know if you saw me looking a little closely, but I was determining like the line way, um, what, how big of a needle I'm gonna use, what type of needle. And what would determine is it depends on the person's skin or like the how much color you're so doing? It, so there's two, there's like a liner, which I'm going to obviously use to line. And then there's um, a shader, which, you know, to shade. Mm -hmm. uh, but the liner is the line, the size that I'm using is dependent on how thick the lines are. So for example, I'm going to use what's called a nine round for a lot of this. And then I'm also going to go in with, a seven tight for the smaller ones. And then I'm gonna go in with an even bigger one to go around like an 11. So um, yeah, just to give it some depth, you know, and then also just cause there's science to tattoos. So over time, these lines do spread under the skin. So just to be like where the lines get a little bit tighter, I'm gonna use a smaller line. That way it gives the, the line some room to breathe. Uh -huh. Because over yeah, time, it's it's just going to spread It does a little bit, out. yeah. And there's so much science behind tattoos. That's why a lot of people, there's no reason for me to expect my clients to know the reasons why tattoos work. Because why would you, you know? But I'm just you, curious because I'm nerdy. Yeah. No, it's cool. <laughs> no, it's cool. And I like to explain it because um, otherwise, you know, people might see something online that could have been... You know, they don't get to see how it ages or anything. So it's, it's educating. And that's why, you know, every other Tuesday, Electric Lady does a tattoo history. May it be about 
um, just either a specific artist, meaning behind tattoos, and sometimes like the science of it, the healing, the aftercare, because yeah, why would you know? Um, and that way, I'm not just talking a bunch of stuff, you're understanding, you know, okay, well, well, this is why this would work, this is why this wouldn't work. So it makes, it makes it easier. We're, we're constantly saying it's a collaboration, because it really is. I'm bringing your idea to life, you're giving me the trust to execute it, you're sitting well for me to be able to do so. So it's, I really like to not be the typical tattoo shop where, you know, you feel kind of nervous and tough. Of course you feel nervous. Here, I want you to feel comfortable. You can ask me anything. I'm going to overly explain. But that way, you know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So, yeah. But today, I'll give you an aftercare card. Like I said, we're very thorough. We give it an aftercare card with instructions. I ask you to send me a picture once it's settled on the skin in four weeks. I want it looking its best. So if you have any questions or anything... Absolutely. So what are the different parts of the tattoo machine? So it depends. So there's two types of machines. There's what is called a rotary and then what is called the coil. Um, today I'm actually using all rotaries. Um, but I mean you have like the vise, the, the tube, the... there's so many different different parts. The way I'm setting them up are differently according to the machine type. Like I'm using um, one that's built by an artist named Joshua Bowers, two that are Dan Cubans, which I like to compare to kind of like the supercar of machines just because they really hit and they can do, they can just, they just, just use stab them. me hard. <laughs> well, it's not hard, Arr. but you know, they get in there. So um, there's, there's a lot of like complex parts about it. Um, I like to get ones that are custom made. Uh, I used to, I don't really use the quiet ones. And then now I'm just gonna set up some colors, which you know what, I'm actually, there's a lot of color in this, so I'm just gonna set up the black now and then we'll take a break in between the line work and the color, see how you're feeling. And okay. Yeah, if I'm not crying like a little girl. <laughs> yeah. You'll be good. Yeah. So as far as when the, the tattoo machine's actually going, mm -hmm. it's what the, you're dipping the needle in the ink, and then that's the the needle is essentially pushing the ink into the yeah. skin. Or yeah, so you'll like once I'm doing it, you kind of see, but like it's going. I mean, it's going pretty quickly. This is my power supply that um, kind of I kind of like a guitar pedal in a way. Where I can kind of modify. <laughs> it looks like a guitar pedal, doesn't it? This one's really cool. Um, custom made from. Uh, Freedom Electric, super cool. But uh, yeah, so I can actually adjust how how hard the machine is hitting. So this this is kind of determined by multiple factors. Where on the body, um, you know, what are we doing? The age of the skin, um, and just kind of running my machine and kind of listening to it and making sure it's kind of going the way I want it to go. And then per machine is different too. So so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Just make sure I like how this is sounding. Oh yeah. <laughs> there that there noise, there, there it is. is. So that knob, is that adjusting yep. pressure or? It's basically how hard the machine is hitting. Okay. So like it, and like you'll notice some, I have a couple that are louder than others mm -hmm. and whatnot, but. Okay. okay. So do I, <laughs> do I, oh man, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Am I? Yeah? Okay. If you say so. Oh. Where's the tissues? I'm gonna. You need a um, sensory. We do have. Whoa. We really like to accommodate. What? Like, honestly. Wow. Man. We have the store. Yeah. And here, you can put Oh, can I? Oh. This was made by one of our cool clients. Oh, that's well, awesome. Just wait till you get to the new spot. We have, like, I'm trying to elevate everything, so we just ordered, like, what's called client caddies, where you uh -huh. can just, like, display everything, have it nice and comfortable. Um, but, yeah, it's really important for us to, like, be accommodating. And um, are you ready, by the way? <laughs> Before. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm, I'm ready I, I believe this. it. How you feeling oh, so far? I'm I'm feeling okay, and, and I'm sure this is the this is the best question that you get, right? Is it gonna hurt? How much is it going to hurt? 
I know. And it's like, I can never answer that. Everybody is so different. Well, I always, my answer is always the same. It's yeah, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to get that question. Did that hurt? Like, yeah, it exactly. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, because it is a needle drilling your skin multiple times, right? Is that it how is. It works? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. We should yeah. remind people though, and I guess this kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier. You know, it may be year four in tattooing, but really it started a long time ago. Like if you didn't, if you weren't an artist in your, what, you said you were a kid, a child yeah. when you started drawing? Yeah. Like, let's say you didn't do any of that. I bet you were, you wouldn't be like where you are today. I because agree. you Because it takes so much art in order to, because it's not just okay, this is how you operate the tattoo machine and this is how you properly clean up an arm or, you know, or this is how this type of shading works. It's really, the design is so important. It is. And it's kind of interesting because with tattooing, I really find it that although the artistry is really important, it's the technicality of it comes first, being able to properly apply something because you can be as creative as you want to be, but if you're not well-rounded and knowledgeable and applying it the right way, then you know what's the point. I want to remind people, I started really doing this when I was 30 years old. I wasn't like, I, I always wonder what it would have been like if I was like 18, but you can start at any time to really follow a passion. And as long as you are a compassionate person and you do things with integrity, I will preach and preach integrity, integrity, it'll come back to you in return. What was your first tattoo? Oh that gosh. You, <laughs> that are, I did are, or that I got. <laughs> well, let's for let, let's go with first tattoo you ever got cuz obviously you got your first tattoo years before, you know. Yeah, I um <laughs> I actually got my first tattoo when I was 16. I was in Texas just disclaimer you cannot get tattooed when you're younger than 18 in the state of Illinois even with a parent consent. So before people start saying, "Oh, you got tattooed when you were 16." I was in uh, Texas. That was my cousin that owns a shop. My mom let me get tattooed because my cousin did it. So I have Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. Yes. I'm a yes. Disney nerd. This is the second time I brought this tattoo up today. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's so I had uh, – it gets even better. I had Princess Jasmine holding a guitar. Now, keep in mind, I can't play guitar. I dated a lot of boys that played guitar, but that was yeah, during my... Did. Oh, God, I know. I know. I married one. But, yeah, it's so... I didn't know your husband was a... Yeah, he used to be in a band called the Hoot Hoots. I don't know if you remember what? them. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. That was before I knew him. Um. Oh, wow. But, I didn't know he was – I well, one, I didn't know he played him. Two, I – yeah, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, he's actually um, taking courses in Chicago right now to potentially learn how to build guitars, which I think is really that's cool. That's awesome. You know, KCC used to have a – I think they still have a guitar building class. I didn't actually. know that. Yeah. I have to let them know. Yeah, they do. It's pretty cool. I They posted something the other day of one of the um, guitars that a student was working on. It looked pretty cool. Oh, so anyway, so Jasmine is holding a guitar. A guitar. It, what what was she wearing? You know the outfit when like she's all sexy and Jafar's like oh, has her yeah. as a like, captive, and she's like it's like what this like is a just red. Getting worse and worse. <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah. And she was wearing a red outfit, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I just really like Aladdin. Okay, I'm a kid of the '90s. And Who doesn't love Aladdin? I love Aladdin. I have yet to do a face tattoo. I've been asked a couple times, but I don't know. It's like the oh, mom. Okay. I mean, it's like, well, what do you do? So, the, so that's the thing. So there are tattoo placements that you turn down. So sometimes, yeah. So you've been approached to do face, but you're like, mm, no, I'm not. You doing know, that. It, and that could be like if the person has like not really any visible tattoos and they're wanting to do something like that or, and you know, it's everybody's right, but it's also my comfort. If I'm not a hundred percent comfortable, whether it be the subject matter, the placement, or, you know, somebody super young getting a job, like I think about them getting a job in the future. Like if they have something like just on their face and it may not be the best idea, then yeah, I just say no. Cause if I'm not confident in it, then it's not worth it to yeah. anybody, to myself, to the work. 
Yeah. But if they're do doing that. like a Post Malone tribute, then <laughs> yeah, I guess all, you know. I guess that's all fair, right? <laughs> or maybe if they don't want it to be permanent, maybe you can just make like the temporary like tattoo maybe to, that they could put on their face for their shows you know i have done that before have you like, really temporary tattoos well yeah when i teach classes to kids about tattoos um i put on temporary tattoos on them i teach them about placement and then i even like make like coloring sheets of like two arms one that i've done all the line work for that they can color and learn how to shade and then another where that they can draw cool. so yeah I, I love doing that but that's kind of why I am trying to bring a different light to the idea of tattooing, you know, being somebody that's involved in the community um, that is fully tattooed, that this is my job. Um, we tattoo a lot of professionals here. I'm talking to a lot of teachers, nurses. Um, librarians. Like, uh, Yeah, I do actually have a lot of librarian clients. But, um, yeah, it's just and, – and even, like, you know – I sponsored a Dynamo soccer team, and I'm always like, okay, are they going to be okay that they're on Electric <laughs> Lady Lounge, you know? But yeah. Gosh, that's awesome, though. Well, you know what I should do is since uh, Pewter Pros and Digital World Design and Stitch Prints are sponsors, I should just have their logos tattooed on me next. Since yeah. they're the title sponsors of... <laughs> And and a Dairy Queen Blizzard tattoo. I bet. That have you actually, done Dairy Queen? I have it, but that would be really cute. I that can already envision cute. envision yeah. it for sure. Yeah. I feel like I'd want to get a a Blizzard there. Like What's your favorite Blizzard? Blizzard? I don't know. I mean, they have so many amazing flavors. I mean, I guess probably my go to as a kid, and if there's, um. You know, like if they're out of like one of the seasonal flavors I really like, probably the chocolate chip cookie dough That's is probably my go to. What was the sugar cookie like? Oh, that was. Oh, so like good. around the holidays? Yeah. yeah, so for this past holiday season, they had the frosted sugar cookie. Yeah, that one was so good. And then the, the peppermint one was really good, though, too. But the, uh, the flavor of the month this month is the Reese's Take Five. Ooh, I love a Take really Five. Good. I yeah. did not know they had a blizzard of that. Yes. And I'm a sucker for pretzels and chocolate. So, Me too. yeah. So that kind of works out. But yeah, that would be fitting to have a Dairy Queen tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess to for anyone that is not watching the video version of this, Brie is doing what we're calling the outline, right? Yes. So, it's black ink. And um, as I said earlier in the introduction of the podcast, where the design that got the most votes was the <clears throat> Illinois shape with the train and the train bridge and the Kankakee River. And the actually, the you can see the dam in there as well. And of course, that's the view of the Schuyler, um, uh, the Schuyler train bridge and the the river dam in the background and there's some stars and a moon it's, it's like a what was it a, is it a dusk or a dawn or is it just an evening i guess either way it depends on how you look at it, it yeah. be either either one mm -hmm. which i did not know that there was trains on that dam and when you when so there is right like yeah there, I right because that me a picture of one and i was like oh i did not know that so yeah i sent when we were going through this whole process i sent Brie wanted some pictures of of what I was thinking, and so one of the pictures I sent you was yeah of the of uh, I can't I think it was an older or I'm actually I might have sent you a couple pictures of this, but I think I think they were both older, but one was like super old, yeah, and then one was maybe like sixties or seventies or something like that. It was a little newer, um, but yeah, there's those trains that. Go by. That's so um, cool. Yeah, on that bridge. So I just feel like it's one of the like iconic scenes of Kankakee that you see on like old postcards and stuff. In fact, maybe one of the pictures I sent you was one of the old postcards. I can't remember. What about the first tattoo you gave? 
So my first tattoo that I gave was actually on myself. Um, no. Yeah. So what? I did. How, where, how did you? You can actually see it. <laughs> I did that little bat on my uh, leg. Um, did you have to use a mirror? It was actually really. It's it's pretty easy to do on the legs because the main thing is having both hands accessible. Because you know. Did Matt tell you to do that? Did he suggest he did. that? Yeah. He did, which I was all about it. I really wanted to. Um, when he let me do it, it was a big deal because it kind of huh. like starts everything, you know, because really prior to that, I, I probably watched Matt tattoo for a year before I could even um, get the machine in hand. I was his first apprentice, so... Um, that's a lot of watching. I, I think he, I think he has a couple apprentices now that um, have probably not. They didn't have to wait that long, but mm. you know, as somebody who's teaching their first apprentice themselves, like yeah, you kind of just got to figure, figure it out, and um, you know, just it, there's a lot of like factors on when people get to do what, and yeah, it was um so myself, and then shortly after that, I started. He had, Matt had me start off with like silhouettes. So in case I messed up any lines, I could just like easily recover by filling them in black. And then um, it just kind of goes up in little levels and I could do more intricate things and so on and so forth. But So what's one of the, the craziest tattoos you've ever done or like one of the, the craziest like placements? Um... So I guess the first one that comes to mind is a friend of mine. He gets pretty funny tattoos. But when um, when uh, Coyote Canyon closed down, he got a memorial tattoo of their logo. So that one is weird. <laughs> it's yes. like weird and fun. See, that should have been an option for, uh, for what yeah. we're doing today. It was a Coyote Canyon, RIP. I mean, there was, I swear, this summer I had like a few really kind of funky ones in a row. Like I remember I did like a Furby that looks like Elvira and then um gosh that's great what else was there like sexy Patrick from Spongebob I remember uh, seeing you post that one yeah so what are you so as she's she's still doing the outline to give you an update and as she's doing the outline I've noticed you're you've got some type of is that like a stab or like a cream that you oh, putting on? What uh, is that? petroleum jelly. So oh, okay. the reason for the petroleum jelly is I dab it onto the skin. So when I'm like, you know, lifting up the ink, um, this, the stencil stays. If I were to use water, like mixed with ink, it's going to take it right off. So just okay. to not lose the lines. Oh. Yeah. So if, so for people that have, um, darker skin or, thinner skin what do you usually do in those cases then? um just as far as like tattooing and approaching um like for thinner skin if I have maybe a client that might be older and the skin is thin you know obviously I adjust the machines to not hit as hard um I may approach it softer um with my clients that have darker skin tones um there is science behind like a darker skin tone can form keloids quicker um, and more easily or more easily. So, you know, again, it's, uh, I feel like the ink almost takes a little quicker, so I don't need to go as hard. I need to be more gentle, but that stuff's really important to me too, about just being educated on that. Also, like there's sometimes, um, this people think that, oh, if I have a darker skin tone, I might not be able to get color. Well, that's not true. And so I do offer free like color testing. So if somebody wanted to get like a little design that had a bunch of colors so they can see how it heals in their skin, because there are some differences. Um, but yeah, I think like having that accessible to people is really important because again, I just want people to feel super comfortable. You know, I want this to be a place that they feel like is theirs as well. Yeah. And I definitely feel that. I remember when we talked months and months ago about doing this episode i remember feeling that right away when i walked in here it just it just feels very comforting and very welcoming and hey. when i had previously been tattooed i kind of felt more just like a number oh yeah you know and just like okay let's and just another one and it's like i i just think sometimes too like it's can it just be the conversation the connection you know yeah. it's it's important it really is like just i it makes my life more fun too to like be excited to go to work because you know 
having a good relationship with my clients is important. Like I don't even like calling them clients for the most part because they've become some of my like really close friends. And I mean, I can't believe I have a community of people that support a dream of mine and what I've wanted to create. So like, that's just, that's amazing. That's why like this new place is, I, it's literally just like a love letter to to my client and to the community. I'm, I'm trying to bring something that's artistic and stylish and um, high end and that's inspiring. You know, it's like that's one of my favorite things about tattooing is working alongside other artists because the inspiration is just like never ending. It's like it's just it's a really great environment to be in. All right, I'm going to get another needle out. For that border oh, okay. because it's a little thicker yeah right? and also i just feel like since we're using the state of illinois as a frame i just feel like it will give it that dimension that you know make it pop right helps you i was just using like a seven tight now i'm gonna use like a 14 round so so f when you say 14 is that what it's like 14 and what needles that are is that like, like millimeter or like centimeter or so what is it? What's like the measurement? I guess like think of like a Sharpie kind of, I compare it to a Sharpie versus like a, a normal size Sharpie versus like a thin Sharpie. So okay. now I'm going in with like the big boy, you know, like. Um, she's going in with the big boy. <laughs> it won't be too uh -oh. bad though. This is where I cry. <laughs> uh, You're doing great. I'm feeling, oh, thank you. I'm feeling sore, but you know, that's to be expected. Wow, it's so crazy to actually see this thing come to life. I it's know, like, it's getting there. Yeah. So when you're actually making a design, are you using one of those like pads with a stylus to so how do you oh, so yeah. how do you design your and here opens the doors for all the tattoos and <laughs> Yeah. Um I hear I am preaching how I love traditional tattooing, but I am definitely You're like a digital kid for okay. sure. But also But it makes it easier. One, right? it makes it's more efficient. Also, you guys come and talk to me when you're doing six tattoos a day and then I'll listen to you about your hand drawn designs. But also like I'm <laughs> dang, I'm, she's laying it down. Listen, I, there's a lot of egos out there. I I mean everybody, every artist I feel like. But you know, I do on an I draw on an iPad on Procreate. Um I but also it's just convenient. I'm a mom, you know, I'm I'm also a business owner. It's like never ending and it's just right. You're doing everything yeah, yourself for the most still, part. It's still drawing. It's still designing. It's still like, you know, you sent me photographs, but I designed this, you know, it's like mm -hmm. um so yeah, that's how I do it. Uh, I mean, there's a couple like like you know that's hand drawn up there, like you know the girl with the mushroom, and um, but it just it is like very it's it's way more time consuming because I mean I, I really do give credit to the artists that like do so many hand drawn flash. Um, that is a goal of mine personally that I would like to do more like traditional art. You mentioned you haven't done a face tattoo. Yeah. What's the most like sensitive area you tattooed. Hmm. That, that's a kind of an interest. Well, you know, for everybody it's different. So I uh, mean, I've tattooed, I've done chest pieces. I've done stomachs. I've done butts. I've done, <laughs> um, I've done behind the kneecap. I mean, really, I feel like those ribs, those are all like pretty Ooh. sensitive areas. I can just feel the pain when you're done with a tattoo what is what are the do's and don'ts just from your experience of taking care of a tattoo? So I offer like two pretty much two different types of routines. Now there's one that is like the sort of traditional way of healing, which is I bandage it up, you know, you take it off um when you get home and you're able to clean it with like unscented antibacterial soap. And then I suggest, you know, washing it a couple times a day and then moisturizing um, just a little bit. Uh, you know, it's better for it to stay dry or to not retain moisture. And to, uh, so because sometimes people overdo it. So I um, I used to re recommend like Aquaphor, but now we've been carrying an aftercare, which of course I'm going to forget the name. People of Substance. Okay. I was about to say free people. Totally not the same thing. Um, people of Substance, which I really like because it's, uh, there's no scent. Um, it's really good for sensitive skin. Um, and they normally carry it in kind of like higher end stores because it is of good quality. So I kind of suggest that. The second alternative way that I offer for people to heal 
is I don't know if you've seen um, Sanoderm, Tegaderm, like that second skin bandage. It's, yeah. Yeah, so that's like that clear medical bandage, which I would say a lot of people have an opinion on it because um, it can, like any sort of topical or, you know, adhesive, like people can have a reaction to it. Sometimes it depends on where it is on the body. Um but it, I really like them for my, when I get tattooed, they're convenient. They're, you leave it on for up to, what I suggest is up to four days. You can shower with it. And then you're. Oh, you can even shower with it. Yeah. See, so, I didn't know that. And you're just watching it heal. So, I mean, people kind of get freaked out because they're like, oh, it's like there's an ink sack, um, you know, but it doesn't do anything to the color. You're just watching it heal under the bandage. So I give an option to both or both options to my clients. And then everybody goes home with an after care card. Um, my contact information, you know, if anybody has any questions. So now you're doing shading. I right? am. So right now I'm going in with the blacks, the darkest, um, because basically I have to go in the most saturated color order. Otherwise it would dirty the other colors. So there is kind of like, you know, a little routine. So right now I'm going in with all the blacks. And to me, this is always the part that hurts the most. Really? <laughs> or at least it, it is right now. It's hurting more. Or maybe that's just because we're however long. That's into true. This it, it, I mean, everybody's different. I usually like the shading more because, um, I don't know, it's not, it's like a little bit, it's like painting. It's not like mm -hmm. just so in the skin like a liner where it's like you know i mean it's just in there you're just yeah. you know going with it versus this it's like in and out in and out mm -hmm. i will say i am excited that this is the tattoo that listeners voted the most for because i was actually hoping this one would because um my son loves trains oh that's awesome and there's a train in this tattoo so i'm kind of excited for him to see it yeah, Harrison, he had told me he wanted a tattoo of his name on me, so I just did that. That was my last tattoo I got. Is that that the heart? Yeah, right there? Okay. yeah, he okay. he loved it. Very cute. So when you're actually putting uh, the the needle to the skin, how do you know? You're just like barely touching it, right? How do you know how far? So how far to go or not go? <laughs> it's like, it really just comes with time and practice, but um, it's a little bit different for everyone. Like some people like to, what they say is like ride the tube, like put, they'll go all the way tube to skin. I hang out my needle. That's just how I like to tattoo. So I'm not. So some it. people go deeper. Is what kind saying. of, but like, I don't put, even though I hang out my needle, I'm not putting it all the way in the skin. So okay. it's just a feel. You can see it like it's kind of hard to explain. It's just like a feeling. Like. This black shading you're doing right now looks amazing. So. Yeah, I love when it starts like coming to life. Yeah. And, you know, and even though Lupe's handwritten lyrics didn't win, uh, this one still has his lyrics in it. Yeah. So, you know, this river will carry on. It's still in there. I love Lupe. Yeah, he's, he's the best. He's a client of mine, too. So. Yes, I know he's coming here uh, yeah, soon. again sometime soon. Yeah. So what was your cancer experience then, if you don't mind me Oh, asking. I don't mind. I Not that I love talking about yeah, it, but oh, I think sure. it's important to talk about it. Um, but I uh, – so, yeah, when I was just learning, um, I want to say it was 2018. I was about a year in. My son was not even two yet. Um I I just remember I was having like really bad headaches and long story short, you know, they told me I had an ulcer in my stomach and I was like, okay, I'm just stressed out, you know, what's new? But then I got, I received a phone call about like a week later saying that um, they found out I had malt lymphoma. So it's a very rare cancer of the blood that was localized to my stomach. And um, it's actually most commonly found in like, older men so wow yeah <laughs> totally That's bizarre yeah when they when it happened I just remember like just being totally stunned um and I asked them I said well how did this happen to me my, my main thing was like could this happen to my son but they just said it was bad luck my lightning strike 
And so I say this story, but for those who don't know why we're called Electric Lady, so it really just like shifted my perspective on life because, you know, in the middle of the storm when darkness can engulf you and lightning strikes, the sky does become illuminated and we can become electrified. So hence Electric Lady was born. Um, and that is something that I carry with me all the time because we, we consistently go through hard times. You know, life is not linear. It's just constant ups and downs, but it's really about how we pick ourselves back up. So I feel like if that wouldn't have happened to me, who knows if I would have had such a fire to really just live my life, you know? If, if anything, you know, I hope that my story of that motivates people just because a lot of people are like, I can't do this. I can't do that. It's like, you absolutely can. And half the time I have no, I'm just faking it till I make it. We're all just faking it till we make it. That's how we get through. But really by leaning on each other and community, like that's really just, that's what's important, you know? I agree. So I ended up doing um 20 sessions of radiation therapy, which was nuts. I mean, what was, what, what is, what's the difference between radiation and chemo? So I didn't really look too into chemo just because, you know, like once they told me, I thought I was given my death sentence, quite honestly, like I, um, but what I had to do, and there's different types of radiation too. There's some radiation that when you get done, you can't be by other people. You can't use the same restrooms. Mine wasn't like that. Mine was like the best case scenario if you were to get cancer, I feel like, because I just, the radiation, so it was kind of... I guess ironic, they tattoo um, little dots on your that where the is area like, is. So I have, uh, I have like four little dots of where they gave me this radiation daily. Um, and, you know, by the end of my 20 sessions, I mean, I couldn't even walk. I remember I was just so sick. And some people, most people get sick like the second week in, but not me. I got sick day one. It was just like horrible. Um, but... Yeah, I, I got through that. And once I was healed, you know, because I had to pause my apprenticeship for about, I want to say like two months maybe. And it was crappy timing. It was right when Matt was um, opening up 22 when I just felt bad because, you know, I was learning with him in a private studio. And then here he was doing all this and I wasn't there. But um, once I got back, you know, that's when I did my first tattoo. That's when like everything started happening. And that time was really special to me. And so was that shop just because that's where I started and we had a really good group there for a long time. So I'm really fortunate to have been working with like good people, you know, cause oh, Matt's a great guy. You know, he is. Nice guy. He's nice. He's yeah. a dork, but he's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to give him a hard time. Otherwise Dorks it's are the best. We, we really are. We really are. <laughs> no, they have a good crew over there. Um, I'm really happy to see that they have grown and, you know, I feel like I have a pretty decent relationship with most of the other artists in town, which is good because there's, it, it can definitely not be that way. Um, yeah, like I said, I feel like any artistic field, there's a lot of egos. Uh, oh, yeah. So how do you match the colors to what's on your, is it like the PMS colors or is it a different type of system? So the colors that I use, because I'm using just a Procreate program, but, but then also like when I print it out as a reference, I'm using it very loosely because the printer doesn't print out the exact colors. Right. So this is kind of where I, I like to really have my artistic freedom and just kind of go to what calls to me. I typically blend many, many colors. Um, that way they're nice and vibrant. Um, everybody does it differently. Some artists limit themselves to like a couple colors, a few colors, like a, a true traditional palette would have been you know, maybe four colors, like red, green, uh, gold, black. But I, I don't know. I just, I started experimenting when I was in here with color, I would say. Well, no, maybe a little bit before then. But I had this, like, as the Bee Gees are playing, I had this, like, <laughs> uh, revelation of, like, 60s, 70s. And I was really inspired by the artwork of, like, Peter Max, um, just real psychedelic work. And that's even like how I like to dress. That's how I decorate my house, the shop. I don't know what it is. It's just, it calls to me. So after that, that's kind of when I just started really enjoying color.
Now we're starting the color. Yes, color. Mm -hmm. Is that blue? Yeah, it's a dark blue. So I'm going to go, and I don't always do this. Sometimes I'm a little loose with it, depending. But I try to go with the most saturated um, to then, like, the lightest. Oh. That way, you know, like, if I were to start off with yellow and then, like, put, like, this blue over it, the yeah. yellow's going to, like, it get... It look weird, right? It'll get muddy. It'll not... It'll contaminate the color, kind of. Like, it'll just... Kind of like when you're drawing, like, with a yellow marker, you know, that sort of concept. Mm -hmm. She's digging in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how you doing? Still doing okay? I'm still doing okay. <laughs> the dark blue is looking pretty good. I've even added some purple in here too now. So this oh, is where purple. I'm kind of getting painterly with it. I am color deficient. So. Are you really? Yeah. What's the longest session you've ever done? I don't normally like to go past like four or five hours just because it's a long time. People start struggling. I'm like, and then when people start struggling, I feel like I, I, I want to almost rush it just because I'm like, oh, they're in pain and I feel bad. Yeah. But um, it was a seven hour. One of oh my, my friends. Gosh. Well, we were doing a chess piece, and I thought we were only gonna line it, and uh, he wanted to keep going. So yeah, seven hours. I. He's tough. I'll say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of a progress report here. We're close to close to done. Let's see, let's wipe it down real good. I mean you did great. And I didn't cry. Like, no, oh. you did fantastic. <laughs> Not yet. Maybe I'll cry tomorrow. I think we're done. Wow. So how uh how hard how hard was it? It wasn't hard. You had great yeah. skin, it went really well. Like I thought that maybe talking while doing it was going to be like distract. I don't know what something was going to be distracting, what I thought, but it too. wasn't. It really wasn't. Because honestly, that's kind of what I do every day is just like talk and, you know. Kind of like a hairstylist, right? So, I mean. <laughs> so now what I do is I say, take your time getting up, check it out in the mirror. Okay. And then I got to do my famous, you know, swipe down video. Oh, yeah. I got to do the swipe stuff. down video. Okay. Let's see if I can get it up. And I, uh, you know, I know, they provide with little, these little sensory toys. Uh, <laughs> if, you know, if it, and I did end up getting the, uh, the popsicle or ice cream, you know, use that for just the tail end there. Oh, boy. Wow. My butt. My butt is actually, my, my butt is asleep. My, uh, my legs, I don't think are asleep. It's just my butt. And my arm, actually. My arm is <laughs> the, the arm that got the tattoo is asleep. Wow. Yeah, see? It makes everything else look so subpar. It's like, okay, here's these. Oh, you got tattoos? Okay, yeah. Oh. All right, let's see it. Yeah, let me do a little light down just so you can see it without the plasma. Yeah, it looks so good. Wow. I love it. I love it. I do. Good. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known exactly what to pick for, you know, like Kankakee County, but I feel like that's such a good representation. It was really hard. Special thank you so much again to Bree Haug of Electric Lady Lounge for doing this collaboration with me. I had more fun than I could ever possibly imagine, and I think it went pretty well. I would love to hear your input because I would like to do more interactive episodes and kind of out of the norm episodes um, for Kankakee Podcast. So please, you can always drop me a line on social media anytime at Kankakee Podcast or at Jake Lamore Media and let me know what you thought of this episode. But special thank you so much again to Bree. She was just so wonderful, so caring. I suggest anyone in the area that uh, in the Kankakee area that wants to get a, get a tattoo to check Brie out, um, you can go to electricladytattoo.com. Uh, you can also follow on Instagram at Electric Lady Lounge and Facebook at Electric Lady Kankakee. And then Brie's account on Instagram is at Brie Haug, and that's spelled B R I. H-A-U-G. So uh, thank you as well to my beautiful fiance Lizzie, for running the camera for this episode as well. And then I want to give a big shout out to Taylor Ledden McMaster and Tiffany Blanchett 
over at the Daily Journal for putting together a great story about this episode. I was very grateful that they wanted to give it some press, and I am always very flattered getting to work with Taylor and Tiffany because they're very great at what they do. Um, Thank you to everyone who voted. If you're one of the people who voted, we got over 250 votes within a matter of a week, which I thought was pretty decent. I think the total number was 266. About 50% of the vote was for Uh, the Illinois outlined tattoo, which is what ended up getting inked on me during the recording, as you heard. And uh, the tattoo to come in second was just Lupe's handwriting of the lyrics, This River Will Carry On. I forget what the percentage of the votes was on that. And then the third one was the Shapiro clock tower. That one came in last. So if you were kind of curious as to where they all kind of stood, that's kind of where they ended up being. So that does it for this episode of Kankakee Podcast. I'm Jake Lamore. I cannot thank you enough for listening and supporting uh, Kankakee Podcast. We are proudly presented by Pewter Pros, Stitch Prints, and Digital World Design family of businesses celebrating 25 years of small business ownership in Kankakee County. You can learn more at mypewterpros.com stitchprints.com and digitalworlddesign.com. Also a special thank you to our patrons for helping make this episode possible, including uh, Lori Krayowicz, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing your name, Lori, Karen Bishop, Seth and Mary Berkey, Jake Lee, Jesse Arsenal, Dave Barron, Veronica Featherston, John Sullivan, Sue Hornung, Samantha Rocknowski, Lake Iverson, Travis Garcia, Jane Bostwick, Dawn Harrison, Simon Topless, Scott Wright, Carrie O'Connell, Jamie Race, Joanne Barry, Anthony Vicelli, Eric Olson, Nolan Bukowski, Natalie Flagel, Carl Earps, Jeff and Rosa Carroll, Teague Dreenan, Sandy and Steve Twait, and Rose Lucky. To become a podcast patron, go to kankakeepodcast.com and then click on the patron tab. And if you pledge $5 or more per month, you'll also hear your name announced on an episode of Kankakee Podcast. There's also access to extended versions of episodes like this one. There's actually a lot more that you can listen to with Bree Haug of Electric Lady Lounge. There's also video versions and more. Now, you're getting to see this video version right now of this episode because I opened it up to the public, but most of the time video versions of Kankakee Podcast are only available to patrons who pledge $10 or more per month. Um, Our theme song is written and performed by Lupe Carroll and recorded by Daniel Bishop. I look forward to talking with you next time. Thankful for the waiting story Time we won't get